it feels great to be back on YouTube for another Shortcuts update. And the reason those two are related is because the Shortcuts app finally just fixed their sync issues. So I've had about a thousand shortcuts in my library for a while now. Previously, they were all nicely organized and color coded. And then with the earlier version of Shortcuts, anytime you would move one, it would entirely scramble the order of the others. Plus, then once you move the order on other new devices, it would just crash on launch. And so all of that is resolved now. You can actually organize your shortcuts and it won't freak out. And it means that I can look at my library and understand what I even have. It's basically just been information overload and without it being organized, it's been in a giant mess. One handy little feature that they added is the ability to tap the library icon and then that'll scroll you all the way to the bottom of your library. Then you've also always been able to tap on the status bar to go all the way to the top. But for people like me who have giant libraries, you always wanna go back and forth from the top to the bottom. So now it's much easier for me to share about Shortcuts, and that is fantastic. So let's just start running through some. Along with the Shortcuts 2.2 update, they also added support for the Notes app. Previously, there was pretty basic support where you could always show the Compose sheet, and they would also remember your most recent note, so you could save it to the same spot over and over again. But you always had to open up this custom UI and click Confirm. Now there's a toggle that lets you not show the Compose sheet, and that means that you can create your notes in the background automatically. Unfortunately, they won't go into a folder right now, but at least you can just send them into the Notes app and organize it later. So in addition to updates to that Create Note action, there's also Find Notes, Append to Note, and Show Notes. So Find Notes lets you actually bring in all of your notes from the Notes app, which is pretty cool. You can get all of them and act on the text within each of them and then send them off to different apps or do something with it in shortcuts. There's a ton of possibility here. I like to pull in all my notes and sort them by the most recently modified and then you can kind of choose from your recently used notes and act on those. Or you could pull in all of your notes at once and send them off to a service like Evernote really quickly, which would have been a little complicated before. One thing that's actually really cool is I found two little secret features that they didn't make that obvious. One is that when you pull in a note, any of the things that you've handwritten using something like the Apple Pencil or maybe just your finger on the screen can then be translated into text and you can copy that text out of it. Previously, notes would do optical character recognition or OCR on the notes and then you could search for those terms, but you can never copy that text out. Now you can with notes and that's pretty awesome because it's a default app, which means that anyone with an iOS device can do it. The other feature is that once you've grabbed one of those notes and you're working with a note piece of content, you can actually tap that variable and extract more information out of it. So say you just want the body and you want to skip the first line, you can grab that or you can also grab the folder of that note. Plus you can get that creation date or the modified date. I find it a little weird that Apple didn't create a get details of notes action because they have that for all different other types of content. Basically, you'd have to come across this to discover it. It's not exactly super obvious that you can get the body or the folder out of those notes pieces of content. Apple also added support for Baidu Maps, which is pretty cool for any Chinese users who were kind of lacking with the Apple Maps or Google Maps integrations. Now you can show directions and it'll open right into Baidu Maps. But for some reason, the show in Maps action doesn't work with this, so I'm not sure if that's just a mistake or there's some functionality it's missing. But in regards to maps, for anyone who wants to use Apple Maps to get travel time, you can do that with some more advanced functionality in the variable of that action. So once you've gotten travel time, normally it'll just say something like 37 minutes, but now you can tap on it and extract more information. So you can extract just the arrival time. So when you're going to get there, you can send a shortcut to somebody saying, hey, here's what I'm going to get there, not just 37 minutes, now you do the math but it can also then grab the route for you, which is pretty cool if you have multiple paths you take to work. You could easily set up a shortcut that you trigger as you're getting ready to leave and it'll say, hey, this is the route that you need to take. And the last little detail that you can get is the distance too. So maybe it's a different route and you wanna make sure you have enough gas or something like that. It can pull in that distance for you too. And then Apple also updated the adjust date action to be able to get the start of the current calendar week. And I think I might have actually requested this from them because I was always trying to get like a weekly range of Sunday to Saturday and I couldn't quite figure out the date math to like always get Sunday depending on what day it is. So now any time of week, you can just get the start of the current week and then format that nicely. So in addition to all of these changes, there's a couple other critical bug fixes besides that sync stuff. One big one that was pretty bad was that the photos share extension would just fail whenever it passed something into shortcuts. And I saw a lot of people who actually rely on shortcuts to get their work done 
freak out all of a sudden because they're like, this doesn't work. I can't do my job right now. I actually think these types of issues should be addressed in earlier critical bug fix releases and not wait for like a minor update like this because there's been a lot of people who might have used shortcuts otherwise or maybe even gave up on it in the meantime, which isn't great. So I'm super excited to see what else comes from shortcuts. I really hope that the update this summer that I'm assuming is coming with WWDC is going to be huge because this stuff is super powerful and the more and more it can do with Siri and the apps that are on your phone, the more power we're going to have in our own hands and in our pockets. So thank you for watching. Check out the description below for links to all of the shortcuts that I've shown in this video and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Oliver.